Welcome everyone to our devotion today. It's, uh, it's great to be with you all and thank you for joining us wherever you might be. Um, it's a beautiful day here at Silver Bay. We have some new snow, but it's beautifully sunny today and warm, warmer out. Uh, the lake is frozen. There was a uh, ice fishing uh, tournament this past weekend, so there were hundreds and hundreds of people ice fishing out uh, on the lake. And uh, I don't know who won the tournament, but uh, I'm sure it was fun and a beautiful day to be out there. So um, again, thank you for being with us today and may whatever we do today um, be a blessing for us. So let me just begin with a prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we, um, we take a moment to drop into a sense of the divine. We ask that your presence be with us as we have a chance to talk about scripture today and talk about our faith and talk about also what's going on in the world. So Lord, open our hearts to what you would say to us. Help us to remember your, the mercy, grace, forgiveness, and love that you hold us in each and every day. So Lord, with open hearts and open minds, we enter in this this time together. This we pray in your name. Amen. So, um, what I was planning to do today originally um, was going to be the fourth uh, in a series that I've been doing on faith formation. And, um, and I worked on that a bit, and that will be the next time. But um, when I saw what was going on in the world t today, um, I thought, you know what, the Christian community really needs to address this in some way. I was with a group of pastors. We have our pastoral cohort on Friday morning, this past Friday morning, and um, all of us who were on the call together uh, said, yeah, we had been working on a, a Sunday message and that wasn't gonna cut it with what happened in, uh, in Europe. And so um, this, today's uh, devotional, um, I, I want to, as best I can, sort of address what's happening because I think the, the, the Christian world needs to weigh in on this. And I just felt for so many of us pastors on the Friday call that we couldn't preach about anything else. And so today's devotion will focus on, uh, on really the, the idea of conflict and how we deal with conflict as people of faith. And so um, these recent events in the world have really been... Uh, difficult and challenging. And to put it in context, let me begin by saying, um, the world is already weary from two years of a pandemic that's impacted every one of us. And a second thought here is that our country has had this ongoing sort of discourse and political divide for a while now that's bringing out some really difficult things and challenges for, for so many. Um, a recent research study shows that one in every five families in our country has been negatively affected by the political discord that is tearing the na at the nation's fabric. And so, um, well, another piece of evidence that we see uh, in all what's going on, the pandemic and then the political discord in our country, um, there are a number of pa pastors, data is showing us this now, that pa a number of pastors are reporting that they are either really struggling, retiring, or just plain ready to quit. And this, of course, is a concern to the greater Christian community. So in summary, I think in many ways people are tired and lonely. Some are sick and grieving and hurting and angry and sad and overwhelmed and just plain fed up. And so even as the pandemic seems to be winding down, now we can add to the list, we're downright scared. The Russian invasion of the Ukraine has shaken us. And this act of aggression has destabilized the world and thrown Europe into chaos. So what's to make of all this? Well, let me begin with some scripture which addresses the issue of conflict and war. The Bible has much to say about conflict, and what I've chosen to read here in these passages that follow 
I hope speak uh, to this current conflict and give us some guidance and give us ultimately hope as we look at what's going on right now in our world. The first passage I'd like to focus on is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. And uh, it begins by saying he, and that he here is God. The uh, prophet Isaiah is sharing with us what he believe, believes God is saying. And so he says, He shall judge between nations and shall decide disputes for many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war no more. Here the prophet Isaiah, in responding to the warring world of the Old Testament, is saying that God is to be the judge. And in other words, let our faith in God dictate our behavior when considering conflict or going to war. So the challenge here, though, is that many world leaders don't have faith in God. Rather, they have faith in themselves. And in this current situation, their need for power, more land, more control, more authority is dictating. How many innocent lives will be lost because one man is at conflict within himself and is totally unaware of how his unconscious is influencing his behavior? How truly tragic and incredibly sad this is. God weeps. Another piece of scripture, John 16, 33 says this, I have said, and this is Jesus speaking, these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus is so clear here. He says to us, take heart, meaning hold it in your heart, that the love of God, whom we know in the life of Jesus Christ, clearly says that I have overcome what is going on in the world. So let us remember that there is something much greater, much more profound, much more important than the greatest armies of the world much greater than the dictators of the world, much greater than the forces of evil that threaten to destroy. And what is this that is greater? It is the love of God and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The light always drives out the darkness, always. Another piece of scripture, John 14, 27, has a similar message and says this, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Again, the peace of God which passes all understanding provides comfort for our souls in times like these. The peace we seek is the peace that comes in our relationship with the divine. The world will never give us the peace that our hearts need and desire. Let me say it again. The world will never give us the peace that our hearts need and desire. This only comes from the divine. Another scriptural passage, Matthew 5, 9, it's from the Beatitudes and you'll recognize it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. What a beautiful passage. Could the message from God be any clearer? Peacemakers are the sons and daughters of God. I can't help but think of my friend Mark Johnson, who had passed away. He was truly a peacemaker. And lastly, James 4, the book of James, chapter 4, the first and second verse, and I'm reading out of the New International Version, James writes this, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Let me read that again. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? 
and I continue with the scripture. You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. So you quarrel, fight, and my add on and go to war. The English Standard Version of that same passage says this, you desire to have more, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain it, so you fight and quarrel and my addition and go to war. I believe these words from James, the brother of Jesus, are so insightful and so revealing and they offer us an understanding of the psychology behind conflict. And this understanding of psychology goes not only for war and conflict at the worldly level, but also in our country, in our community, in our workplace, in our families, and within ourselves, you and me. So we fight, we go to war, we have conflict. So why do we fight? Why do we go to war? Why do we have conflict? I believe James offers us a very thoughtful answer. And I quote again, don't these conflicts come from your desires that battle within you? What James is saying here is this, that the unresolved conflicts, the desires, the wounds, the hurts, the pain that we carry within us are the very seeds of the conflicts we create around us, both at a worldly level and at a local level and at a personal level. Let me just say that again. What James is saying is, is that the unresolved conflicts, the desires, the wounds, the hurts, the pain that we have within ourselves are the seeds of the conflicts we have with those around us. I believe that James is prophetically speaking here. He's lifting up the idea that instead of becoming aware of the conflicts and battles within us, we unconsciously project these conflicts and feelings externally onto others, family members, those who disagree with us, those who have a different skin color, those who have a different political outlet, outlook, those from other nations, those who are different than we are. Case in point, Adolf Hitler had a number of internal conflicts, his anger, battles going on inside of him. Psychological understanding of Hitler point out he was angry, deeply wounded, conflicted, and pathological. And instead of looking at his inner issues and becoming more conscious of them and working through them, he projected all of his inner internal conflict and anger onto the Jews. Hitler believed that if he destroyed all the Jews, then evil would be eradicated. The evil that needed to be eradicated was the evil within Hitler. All attempts at ethnic cleansing in the history of humanity have this same psychological dynamic. One group attempts to destroy those that are different, that are part of another group, that are what we call the other. Why? Because of deep, unresolved fears. It is the unconscious and conscious fear of the other, of those over there, of those that are different from us, that brings the heart into conflict. And out of that conflict or war erupts. The current situation, a case in point, a world leader, a dictator invades another country. I've heard people say to me, and I felt it myself, it's like we're back at World War II. It's like we turned the clock back. The consciousness, the understanding, the awareness 
of this act is just mind-boggling. This dictator wants, desires to have more, covets this land, Ukraine. So he goes to war, he fights, he kills, he murders. He's totally oblivious to the unconscious, to what James says is, don't these desires come from the battle that is within you already? Someone once said, until we stop the warring inside ourselves, the war itself will never go away. Until we stop the warring inside ourselves, war itself, conflict itself, will never go away. And this is on a world level again, a country level, a community level, and a personal level. And this is true for all of us. Until you and I, until we stop to address and work out the conflict, the anger, the hurt, the pain, the battle that is within us, we will forever be in conflict and struggle and at odds with people and situations around us. And you know what? In the end, we'll miss the fullness of the abundant life the good book promises us. Oh, how sad. And how truly tragic is the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia. It reminds me of a song that goes like this, and maybe you'll know the tune. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? The song is, where have all the flowers gone? Like so many other times in history, we see innocent men, women, and children being killed in the Ukraine. Oh, how God weeps. Oh, God, forgive us. So, let me now focus on what offers us hope. What offers you hope? What offers me hope? Well, let me make up a little story for you that has occurred to me. So there's a Ukrainian soldier who is operating a, 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 an artillery gun that projects missiles hundreds of miles. He's in his country, the Soviet Union. He's at his station at the artillery gun. He's in charge and hears from the command post the coordinates of the next target. He puts them into his computer. He makes sure all is ready to secure before firing. He pushes the button and a large missile flies off from the art artillery piece towards the intended target out of Russia and into the Ukraine. And this target is in Kiev. He waits to hear what the damage is he waits to hear what happened. And then that quickly sort of comes back, not being able to assess all the damage, but he then focuses on the next coordinates that have just come in. But before he does that, he takes a moment and allows himself just to dare to think about where that missile landed. He reflects on, I wonder where that missile exploded. He knows the accuracy of these missiles are not perfect, far from it. And he wonders from his safe and secure place in the Soviet Union, what damage this missile did. Did it kill anyone? He thinks of his own wife and his 
young son and daughter who live outside of Moscow. In his heart, he starts to, oh, I hope this missile doesn't. And then his headset crackles. He's getting the next coordinates. He needs to put them in the computer. He needs to get ready to send the next missile. Lord, break into his heart. Lord, help him understand. Lord, bring him to a higher consciousness. Lord, love him to a different place. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? What offers me hope? This poem, it's called, I Believe. I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in the sun, even when, even when it is not shining. I believe in love, even when, even when I don't feel it. I believe in God, even when, even when God is silent. This poem was written on the wall at one of the Holocaust sites in Germany. What offers me hope? The popular quote, and you'll recognize it from Martin Luther King. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Yes. What gives me hope? A British woman, I don't even know her name, but I know the story and it's true. This British woman who exhibited a very high level of consciousness about conflict and war. Let me tell you the story. It's a story from 1982 when the United Kingdom and the country of Argentina began a 10-week war over the ownership of two dependent islands in the South Georgia and South Sandwich chain of islands. Maybe you remember it was called the Falcon Islands War. This woman, who remains unnamed, her husband was a fighter pilot for the United Kingdom. And he was sent down to the Falkland Islands to be at war with the Argentinians. And as the war broke out, this man, husband of this woman, shot down a Arge Argentinian plane, fighter plane, and the pilot was killed. And the story came back to Britain, to the UK, and right away the press went to interview her and said, well, we, we've learned that your husband uh, is, a, is a war hero, he shot down, and she listened to what the press said, and then she said, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm glad, her voice was very sad, and she said, I'm glad my husband's alive, but my heart goes out to the Argentinian family who lost a son, who lost a father, who lost a husband. May our thoughts be with them. That gives me hope. That's a consciousness that it's at a higher level. What gives me hope? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. What gives me hope? And you'll recognize this one right away, the greatest commandment, Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Teacher, they said to Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest 
the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That gives me hope. What gives me hope? The fact that God's love is always on the move. May God's love be on the move in the Kremlin. May God's love be on the move in Russia and in the Ukraine and in Europe. May God's, God's love be on the move in your heart and my heart. Because the fact is, God's love is always on the move and God's love moves through the work of the Holy Spirit that's within each and every one of us. This love that comes from the divine, from divine origin cannot be stopped and it will always win out. The light always drives out the darkness, always. What gives me hope? In a few months, we will be back in the Silver Bay Chapel on Sunday mornings. Together we'll be sharing in music and fellowship in the divine love of God. I look forward to this time. In the meantime, may you know hope, and a hope that is rooted in the promise of a loving God. May you know the love of God deep in your heart. May you feel the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the path to the abundant life. May God bless you. May God bless the people of the Ukraine. May God bless the people of the world. Amen. Gracious God, we do pray for world peace. We pray for the people of the Ukraine. We pray for the people of Russia. We pray for the people of Europe. We pray for people everywhere. We pray, Lord, that peace can break out, that leaders' hearts will be touched, that a higher consciousness an understanding of the sacredness of all life take precedent over the need for power, covetousness, control. Lord, you are with us at, in every step of the way. And I would ask you to be with world leaders. I would ask you to be with us. I would ask you to be with presidents everywhere, that cool hands and cool minds, calm hands and calm minds just come into play. 
So Lord, at this time, we ask that your hand be upon us on the world. Lord, I pray for all of those that are struggling, all of those in harm's way, all of those that are still still dealing with COVID. Lord, I pray for the wider community. I pray for all of those on this call today, all of those who are part of this devotion, all of those that, Lord, need your healing hand and guiding touch. So, Lord, we just lift up this prayer to you, knowing of your mercy, your forgiveness, your grace and love. This we pray in your name. Amen. close with the benediction. Gracious God, let peace be in our hearts, here, around the world, everywhere. Let peace break forth. Let the peace that passes all understanding fill us, fill all. Let peace come to our world. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. Austin and and I here today are so glad that you had a chance to tune in. We hope all is well with you. We'll be looking forward to hearing and seeing you uh, on a next devotion and look forward hopefully to seeing you in a few short months now. We can feel the sun is a little higher and a little warmer and spring is not far off. Gracious God, be with each and every one of us. Amen. Take care now. Thanks for being with us. Bye.